Hey everybody, Jeremy here from Flatware Creations. Today I am working on some butt faces. So I'm going to be... I was going through them and I'm like, hey, I might as well pop online and go live for a little bit. Um, got a couple new things going on with my tool here. Where's my chat? There it is. Hello. <laughs> Hello. There we go. All right. That's working. That's working. Check both cameras. That's working. And I already did this one, I think. Yep. We're going to close that. Um, everything should be going. So whenever you hop on, just let me know you're here. I am just going to keep working. And I'll keep checking back to see if there's any new messages. Um, we'll switch over to the other camera here. There we go. So I'm just flattening out these spoons. So I go down about halfway just to make this dimple and then I'll get the front half and then the back half. Tilt the handle down, just one more squeeze in the middle. So I just keep going, get that dimple going. This just saved my arm. I used to flatten them with the mallet. Uh, I have a big dead blow mallet. And that works great. But since I found this, it's a lot easier on my arms. And the way I have... The way that I have um, my handle... It's at shoulder height is the, the highest point. Hi, Lou. I'm doing okay. Finally feeling better. Getting back to work. Um, so I have this. Whenever it's all the way down, my arm, my hand is shoulder length apart or shoulder level. So as I pull down, I have the most amount of leverage and it's the most stable that I could be. Saves a lot on my shoulder. Yeah, so between salmon fishing season, the beginning of winter, and uh, orders, I've been pretty swamped. And I've been sick for the past week, like almost eight days. Um, and so I'm just feeling better enough to get back to work. The bad part about me being sick is that I'm not able to move. And then whenever I start moving again, my back says, what are you doing? We don't do that anymore. So I have to recuperate from being sick. That one's flat and that one's flat. Awesome. All right. So switching over to the next set. I have a whole bunch of knife handles like this already set. Um, I have those, and I think I have about 30-ish in the tumbler right now. Um, they're on their third bath. One, two, three. Yeah, I'm not overdoing it. I felt a pinch earlier in my back, and I was like, uh, maybe I'll go sit down and do some work. <laughs> um, 
So at least I'm out here in the shop finally. It feels nice to be doing something again. Um, but I have, yeah, those are, the other handles are on their third rinse. So the handles are notoriously just nasty and a lot of them were really uh, tarnished. So I had to buff them out and all of that compound on them is kind of like a grease. So it takes a couple of baths, tumbles to get all of that out of there. For sure, good to get out of the house and get your mind off things. Yeah, yeah, this is this is definitely my therapy. Um, so the next time in like, well, I set it for an hour, but normally half an hour, Dawn dish soap, hot water. We'll just clean most of that up. Um, I run it for half an hour, just a big squirt of Dawn and just let it run. The water pours out black, fill it up with water, more Dawn, tumble it 30 minutes and so on. And it's normally about three times um, until you get until you get to this point. Nice and shiny. And this is what we need for uh, our bud bases. Uh, whenever those get out later, after I get all these done, um, this should finish the order I'm working on. Um, it doesn't look like enough, though. That's weird. All right. <laughs> well, let's see how far we get. Um, I'm going to switch you over to here. Actually, let me see. Probably get you guys. That's better. This is going to be a lot more, a lot clearer for you guys. So the part I'm doing right now is I'm getting these ready to be bent. Actually, I need to bend them first. <laughs> All right. Actually, sorry. Let me bring that back down here. And we're going to go to this guy. Okay. I need this one. So let's see. Can I turn that? Okay. Um, so I'm making the handles for these right now. The customer likes them like this. This is the the way that she wants them. Um, so to do that, I start with the pattern side down. And I'm using the second size down pin from the flat wearable 3D press or system. I'm just going to make this nice little candy cane. So after that, I flip it over. I just push the spoon all the way to the back. And now we're going to bring this up. Flip it over right at the right here where they meet the spoon bowl. Bend that up with my hands, and now I'm putting that down a little bit. Let's see. Oh, wow. Hi, Darlene. Good to see you. Did you say you use hot water and tumbler? I would be terrified. 
Uh, didn't explode. Have you had any problem? No, I've never had any problems with it. Um, yeah, none at all. Lou, you inspired me to renovate my spare room downstairs and use it as my art studio. As you were doing the trailer, I started emptying all of my junk and had a contractor come in and do all the work. Well, that's good. I wish I had hired a, a contractor. Um, let's see. Hi, Jeff. Kind of weird. My phone said you were doing a live, but I couldn't find it on my tablet. Anyway, a long time now. See, watch. How's it going? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm making butt faces today. Um, let me flip the camera here. So after I get this bent, um, that's the button. Oh, we'll get that out of the way. Um, so after I get it bent, I put it on my anvil, and I want this to sit flat. Right? That's exactly what I want it to do. I'd like for it to not have that wiggle. Um, and then after I do this step, I put my finger in here, and I put... <laughs> I put the handle piece in here and I'm squishing this piece. So I'm bringing it up. Hi, Melanie. Oh, my mouse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, it, it's optical and it is something I definitely need for running all the cameras and everything and changing the screens. So now that what I did whenever I bent that like this and I pushed them together, that brings this closer to the middle. So whenever we put our our handle on there, it's now towards the middle It's now towards the middle of the spoon. So, and whenever you put it down, yeah, that's going to be okay. So, rinse and repeat. Um, all right, so I'm just going to go through and bend all of these real quick. And... I'll keep looking up to see if you guys have any more questions or comments or just saying hi. I think I got you guys all the way down. Yep. Okay. I do have a question for you guys. So I finally got some music on here and it won't let me hear it. So uh, let me know if this is too loud or you'd like it quieter. Um, I've been watching a couple of my past live streams and it was kind of boring at some points so i figured if i added some music maybe that would help so let me know if this music is too loud so we just keep going can't hear anything up a little bit. So it's about halfway. Nope, sounds soft. Down one more notch. How's that?
Okay. It's too loud. There we go. How, how about that? I'm running away. Is it just kind of nice light background music? Too soft now. Okay. So let me bump it up. 24.5. I done. Thank you. I'm just testing it to uh to see if it works. So once we get it figured out, I'll mark down what it, what it is and then I'll be able to sit later on. Too loud. So we're at 24. Let's go negative 30. Come on, where's 30? Okay. How's that now? Mm. Uh, yeah, once we get the setting done and get rid of it, oh, this one's going to be hard to bend. So you can't see it here. Sounds good, better. Okay, good. Um, so we're at negative 30. All right, we'll get rid of that. Thank you guys. Oh, I was gonna put you down here. <laughs> Sorry about the camera work, guys. Okay. Yeah, no, I was just testing it. Um, I wasn't able to hear it earlier. Uh, when I get these that are pretty hard. There we go. I'll switch over to my left hand because I'm right handed and I'll take and I'll tap them up. It's definitely too hard to do with my fingers. Get that guy in there. This one right here. I think it's almost time for me to switch to my other block. Do I ever make the salt and pepper holders? Nope, I've never made those. I've seen them quite a bit, but I've never made them. Check, see if it's straight. I'll sort over there, and then whenever we get to our next step, we'll go ahead and um, two spoons for the feet and legs, forks to hold the shakers, and the other spoon for the head. This is great. I was making bud vases and decided I needed some options for the bends, and here you are. Perfect. I'm glad I could be here. Um, yeah, this is the only time I make them this this way. 
uh, is for this customer. Uh, but I start with the pattern side down. I'm on the, the second pin. And I'm in the shallowest. I'm in the shallowest part of the block. And I start with the pattern down just over enough to be able to get it to stick on the other side. Just getting a nice candy cane there. And then I push the spoon right up to the metal. I've almost thought about cutting like a little channel through here just so the spoons will slide through. I don't think it'll make too much of a structural difference. So I'm looking at them to see if they're straight. I want this and this to be straight down the middle. If it's not straight, you can bend it over a little bit. So we'll just get these bent real quick and we'll go on to the next step. I will no normally do a bud vase right in the beginning and finish it, but I've done so many videos with bud vases. Um, they're one of my, my biggest wholesale items. Just check it for straightness. And if you can't bend this with your fingers, uh, let's see. Get rid of that one. You can come down here to your vise. I use a piece of leather in here. So this needs to come this direction. You can put the spoon bowl in the vise and then bend your piece. All right. I think it's almost time to start switching over to my other block, but. I saw that one bend right over as I hit it. And you can use the nylon end for this too, but I find whenever I'm coming down with it, the black rubber end really grabs a hold of it. So again, we're tilted a little bit. This one I have to be careful of cracking this pattern does not like me. Just cracked. <laughs> did it? Oh, no. Nope. It just felt like it did. Whew. All right. Slow bending. And it's so soft that I'm going to lift that one up. All right. This is the next spot. All right, no cracks, and it's straight. Woo. Some of those patterns make me so nervous, especially trying to turn them into rings. Let's try and keep that straight. This is another pattern that's really 
Um, sometimes it will break right up, right up in here. It's got a bend slow. It was snowing yesterday, but I've been sick for a little over a week. Today's my third day of feeling good enough to do anything. And the first day where my back didn't completely <laughs> tell me no. It's definitely threatened me, but I'm like, I can do this sitting down. I'm like, hey, I haven't talked to everybody in a while. Did I do that wrong? No, I didn't. For a second there, it just looked weird. What type of bend is my favorite for vases? Um, for the soldering the vases, this is actually one of my favorite patterns, or favorite types. Um, let's see, do I have another, let's see, yeah, this guy polished up, oh, it's not going to help us though, um, fortunately I happen to have a ton of spoons. Let's see. All right, so we're going to use this guy. Um, normally, or before, it would take, I'm going to the second hole. I liked them kind of being made like candlesticks. Then we'll take this one. I don't want to make that tight. Did I just do the same thing except backwards? Yes, I did. <laughs> That's funny. All right, well, let's flip this back over here. Right down into the water. So let's get this one. Let's grab another one. So I want this out. So you carry it like this. <laughs> now my brain's all messed up. I want it this way. So I need to make this one this way. My brain says yes. Take that 
down another one. And then I flip this over. Oh, I didn't flatten it. I'm like, why is this giving me troubles? No, that's okay. That's what I'm here for. Ask me questions and I will figure out the answer if I don't know. Undo that a little bit. So I think for this, we're going to have to do this bend first and then go to the next one. Yeah. So we're left with this right now. So I did the first one pattern side down and then bent it towards me. My second bend should have been the bowl, bowl side up. And then my third bend should have been this one down the middle. And what we're gonna do is take this, grab it right here. So I would put something right here, something with a round uh, circle round pliers it doesn't have to be these graduated ones but just something here to hold it to keep it from pinching off and just lift it right around so we look like this right now i'm gonna put this back in here Bring that up. So you can have the handle sitting just like this up against it. Turn that right. Or if you wanted, you can bring this back some more in your bend and not have so much here. I just almost had a heart attack. Uh, let's see. So where I'm at, out in the shop, right across from me is my living room window. So. I look over and I see somebody in the window and uh, I was like, um, I didn't get a notification. Someone's coming up to my house. It was me. I let the cats watch me on YouTube. But I was like, uh, that's not supposed to happen. Where, who is that? Let's flip this over again. I just thought that was funny. Okay, so we'll put this one off to the side. Um, that one was that. And back to the OCD. I like it when these big spoons are just able to push with my thumb. So this one is going to get a flat bottom um, knife handle. Let's see what do I got? Because this one is not going to get soldered to it. It's going to be on its own. So I use the flat bottom ones. For those it gives me a lot of surface area for the uh, solder to stick to it 
and that's a tablespoon. Most of what we have are teaspoons. This one would be the same thing. And you still want to make sure that they're straight. Ooh, that bent a lot. I didn't want it to bend that much. Just put that in the vise here. So as long as they're in that direction, she's okay with me experimenting and uh, everyone's different, but that's just the style that she likes. So I can definitely play with it. So I'm going to bend this one a little bit. There we go. So I just kind of used a little workaround to get this where I wanted it. Straight. Um, so I finally finished the kiln. I'm excited about that. I have my 3D printer and everything set up. And I've almost got my first ring ready to print out. And once I get everything worked out with that, okay, this is a scary one. Right, here we go. When in doubt, go slow. Um, and as soon as I get that printed out and everything looks good, then I will try casting one. And then I will have my first ring that I could replicate. So the first time I made it, um, this is a dragon ring that I made a couple years ago for my niece. And a whole bunch of people really wanted it, but it took me 14 hours to make it. So I was like, um, I know 15 hours is, uh, I can get that 14 hours. I can get that down. I know that. But I'm still looking at probably 10 hours. The biggest thing was I kept melting the dragons. So, and then I'd have to mark out the silver again, or roll it out, mark it, get the stencil on there, get it cut out. And it was just a mess, but this way I'll be able to take and put 14 hours into a uh, designing it on the computer. And once I once I do that, then I have a ring or design that I don't have to spend 
that much time on again because I'll be able to uh, just print them out now, change the sizes, and I'm excited about that. So I'll be able to have my own jewelry design. Get some of the things I've written down in my book out of my brain. Three more, and then we're moving on. We'll stop that one. Ow. I hit my finger on my magnet. This black thing right here is a magnet. That's way off. That's better. All right, last one. So after I, I just do it unconsciously now, but after that first bend where I have the tip over the edge, so I start my first bend there. I lift it up and I run the spoon up so that I can bend the handle or bend that, um, this piece so it's not so so it's not so straight so I get a, a curve on it and you can see it's not it's not straight it's got a nice candy cane going on there That's the last one. Now we get to the fun part. Let's flip this over. Ah, boo. Bring it down here. So again, I'm checking for it to sit flat. Right now, as everything sits, um, this is back heavy because all the handle is back here. After we flatten this out and get it to sit flat, we're going to bend it and that's going to drop this piece here down towards the middle. And this is going to get smaller here. Let's see, can I let you guys down? Oh, that's better okay so I like the sound of that but I see that it's popped up here in the middle so I'm going to use the nylon portion going around the outside so right now it has a little bend up in the front so I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to hit in the back middle here. Now whenever I flip this over, the tip is on it. You can see it wobbling. There we go. Flat. Again. I'm taking and putting my finger right here, putting the handle in my palm. It 
So I thought about making a jig for it, but the the press is about the fastest I could bend it. Um, because each spoon is different, it ends up, ends up changing all the time. So I'm here, and I'm just going to put the bowl in the palm of my hand, and I'm just going to squeeze them together. Let's see, can go that way. So it's pinching my finger now, and we've got our middle piece here over towards the middle. Check for flat. So we are flat and we are straight. Let's put that one back. So this one I ended up, or it actually came apart in the tumbler. And I think what happened was it wasn't clean enough whenever I made it. And now it's got a ton of solder. So I have to clean all of that off and rebuild it. I was thinking about opening up my shop just for seconds, like um, uh, yeah, I'm not sure how um, I'd be able to make a jig that makes it easier. I, I definitely understand making a jig. I do have jigs for some things. So this one is not bending. I'm gonna use the brass side. Back over to the nylon. So straight. Where'd that come up? And I do that before the bend because once the bend comes down, it's now halfway across the spoon and it's hard to get the hammer in there. Flat, flat. Right. Bend it over. Oh, there's a camera. I think that's that is YouTube's new um, ad thing. They've been changing up the monetized videos. Okay. Okay. So that one's good. Check it for flat on the next one. Straight. Hmm. Where, where's my glasses? Right, I'm gonna turn on the buffer just a second. <laughs> Shirt, shirt, shirt. Where'd it go? The shirt's hiding. Oh, it's over there. So this is the one that I made. Uh, 
just a few minutes ago. Just trying to get the bulk of the um, the tarnish off certain spots. That way I can weld them or solder them together. Okay. Definitely all bowed and not working right. We're going to flip this guy over. Okay, I'm going to bring this one forward. So I've got a piece in the middle. Almost there. You just kind of work it back along the edges. There we go, that's fine. And that's not straight, so we'll straighten there up. Yeah, that's B flat. <laughs> Oh, so I feel this pattern going in my hands. That's what just happened. I was like, oh, pattern. These guys are notorious for baking. So again, I'm going to go really slow. Making sure that I don't get any kinks in the corners. And everything is straight. Same pattern again. Again, try and so see that's how I bent it and the middle popped out. It's a pretty soft spoon. There we go. And that's all straight. Pretty much I just assembly line everything. The way I'm doing the same thing every time. And that ends up saving me a lot of time. You see how it's humped up here? It's higher in the middle. If you start on the sides in the back, kind of work your way front. You don't want to hit the middle because the middle's going to make it bow right out the other way. I am putting a little bit of pressure forward. Call that good. Put this up forward a little bit. So it looks good. This one looks like I already bent it. And it's flat, so I probably already did. So I can see the middle is bowed in and the outsides are up. So first thing I'm going to do is strike it in the middle. So I'm going the middle to the middle back. From here to here in the middle. So that gives us a bow kind of going flat.
you just got to figure out where it's touching. It's making it not go even. So these are just light taps with the brass. Trying to just flatten it out a little bit. Okay, let's bend this. Okay, get it straight. After we get this step finished, we'll be able to start soldering. Flat. Straight. On a good day, I'll get 100 to 200 of these ready. <laughs> that one's way off. <laughs> now it gets flipped over immediately. Now let's try and use the plastic part if you can. If it doesn't move, then go ahead and use the other part. So this is a problem of this. So I'm going to hammer out the back side here. Just work my way around the edge. And this time we're going to take the metal, the brass side. Nice light little taps. And I'm going to the middle. I'll take flat and straight, straight enough. Put a little bow in it. I like that sound. Wanted to bend this one back a little bit further. Just tweak it just a touch. Okay. So those big ones like that with the handles way back, those are going to get the ones that have flat bottoms. I always make sure when I'm making, get my spoons ready, or knives ready, that I have some of those flat ones in there. And this is already flat. Let's see. We got four or five more, and that's it. Take that. And this one, this tip is kind of angled like this. So I'm going to take my round pliers and I'm going to push like right here. I'm going to bring this down, kind of pushing down towards my fingers. And that makes that nice and straight again. Sometimes that happens from the block. Um, I know mine's pretty old and it wants to kind of slide off to the side just a little bit. So I just compensate for it. 
because I know I can take it out. Um, one of the things that I um, learned is that we can fix, we can fix those those twists. Like if our block isn't quite centered, we can fix those, especially doing rings. With the rings, a lot of times, if they don't get right down the middle, um, they'll kind of offset a little bit. So that offset, we want to turn back. Great, let's see, I got three totals. And then I'll show you what I'm talking about. Last one. I don't think I have enough. <laughs> I don't math good. Okay, so let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay. I'll turn this guy into a ring here. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> wrong camera. So we're gonna turn this guy into a ring, but I'll show you what I'm talking about, the, the mm -hmm. twisting. Let me get all of this. Should be able to capture it there. Those are good. So we'll just turn this one into a ring real quick. Do, 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 do. So we're going to make this bypass ring. It's too pretty not to have all the pattern being used. that want to come okay that's better
Okay, so my first bend making this ring, I'm going to put it over here on the other side of the block so I can get the bend going. And then again, I'm raising it up. That way I get the round. So I can already see this thing starting to bend the wrong way. So it's going to be a bypass ring. Let's see if I can get this. Okay, let me fix this. Okay. So this is bent. The side of the spoon is off to that direction. So that means this is pointed off just a little bit. So I'm going to keep bending this. To try and make it a bigger bend. There we go. So this is definitely not straight. But if you take this and you turn turn it to the side, whenever you bend it, you can bring it back around. So I'm pushing it at an angle, and it's coming straight. So now everything's straight. But it's just that turning your piece to the side. And doing that is what brings it back to center. So... But this one, I want this off center because there's going to be a bypass ring. So I'm going to take it back to here. Because it's a bypass, I want it to go alongside the tip there. So I, I noticed that the stem is is going right towards the edge just going to tap it off a little bit just so it barely goes past so the last whack on that thing is always where's my hammer there it is I use a metal hammer and I'm just gonna hit this piece right here see the gap in between just one smack and that gap is pretty much gone and we're nice and tight here Come on, Zoom. There we go. So this main pin makes this a seven and a half ish. So I'll toss that in the rings. There we go. All right, back to work. I got to get that thing screwed into the wall. Um, let's get rid of that camera and go to this one. All right, so we have all of these flattened out. So they're all sitting correctly. Cameras go away.
for this part, I want my anvil to be able to spin almost all the way around. So it's going to be set up like this with the block on top. And I would need to be able to turn it like this so that I could see this angle. So I'm going to solder it mostly here. And then I'm going to turn it this way. And I'm going to solder the, the handle on there. Um, using this third hand thingy. Uh, I don't know where the rest of Oh, here's the rest of it. So this came... And this, it's a R-E-A-C-C. -C. I just got one that was inexpensive. It's like a third hand kind of thingy. But I took off one of the arms. I just barely squished that in there. So make sure that this... Is loose and it's free flowing all the way around and then I'm also using a pair of tweezers one side has the metal on it the other side uh, didn't lose the handle I don't think it's going to make a difference because we're only using this part here so Let's get knife handles. There's one other step. These have all had it done already. Let me see if I can find a good one for you. It's not really going to show up. Um, so these guys, I always... Take the backs, the bottom, put on my glasses. I always sand the bottom so I have a nice flat spot and it gives it some texture to hold the solder. That's all it really takes, just a little bit. Do I match patterns on the spoon handle with the and the knife? Sometimes I will. A lot of times I'm just trying to match the handle with the size of the spoon. So this is a flat handle, like the one we were talking about earlier. Just gonna put the all the way in there, all the way down. I take my clip here and I clip it on the inside and I bring my piece, I want to bring it way down so whenever I slide it up, I slide it right on to the block. That's giving me a lot of downward force on that. So whenever I slide in my spoon, we're going to go with this one. I'm going to pull my block out just a little bit here. So I'm just lifting it up just enough to get it on the spoon. So I'm there. So what I'm looking at here It looks weird from this angle. Slide that in there. I want it to be in the middle. So I've got my straight up this way. Make so at this angle, I'm making sure that everything is straight. It's still way over.
That's better. So I'm trying to line up the, the handle with the spoon handle. And then I need my straight up and down. Make sure this is right again. So if you don't check both directions, you could have your, uh, you could have it tilted like this. So you're checking it for straightness and you're checking it for straightness here. Try and get in here so you guys can see the solder work. So your angle shows that it's it's off. My angle shows that it's good. One last check. All right. Now let's break out the torch, which is over there. Will my mic reach? Give me one more foot. Six inches. Sweet. All right, so I do have a bucket of water down here that I will be tossing them into. Um, I'm using a lead-free rosin core solder. Um, I really like the electrical rosin core. Um, I find this at Lowe's. Hi there, Backyard Creations. How you doing? Um, so I got glasses, torch, water, and that's it. That's all we got to do. So this is one of the easier ones. We don't have to solder back here. We just need the bottom. Turn on some ventilation in here. Alexa, turn my exhaust fan on. There we go. Alexa is my friend. Let me know if you guys can hear that in the background. All right, let's, let's solder this thing. So when I'm doing this, I want a little push so you can kind of hear it. This kind of, that's too, I don't know. So I, I want these little blue teeth on there. And I'm mainly focusing my Lexus is it just trying to obey. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm mainly focusing just at the base of this. I have some solder drawn out. Be careful that you don't burn yourself here. So I probably have five inches or so of solder out. And I'm just going to go down and touch it right at where they meet. Stop shaking. I need a little bit more solder. Let's 
So I want enough to go in there. Gotta go all the way around. Use my spray bottle. Spray it off slowly. Like I try and spray above it so it goes down. If you spray right into the solder, it's gonna get all uh, crunchy and nasty. Yeah, it's it hasn't been that cold up here yet, but I I definitely I definitely feel winter. Yeah, we're 26 degrees right now. All right, so we got that. Always wiggle this. So just uh you just always want to just tilt it so you can wiggle it. Watch your solder mark. If your solder moves, um, give it another second. There's been so many times that I've thought I had everything soldered and I thought I had it cooled down enough and nope. A nice little clean solder line all the way around it. And that's not coming off of there. So, all right. Knife first. Again, bring that all the way down. And you can see how it's hanging over the side there. Just slowly going to bring it up. Bring it straight. Um, check my sideways. That's good. That's good. So where they're touching right here. Uh, <laughs> I was looking for my tweezers where they're touching right here. Uh, we're gonna solder that joint first, and then we're gonna do the bottom. Yeah. I modeled around that blowtorch, two degrees dropping to negative two later. Yeah, that's cold. That's my uh, stay inside and curl up on the couch weather. Torch. Let's see. So again, little push. I'm just going for the joint. So I'm not heating everything up. I'm just heating up that joint. Can I get you there? Yeah, I'm just right here. So whenever you're testing the joint to see if the solder flows, just barely touch it because you can move the spoon. So just fed in a little bit there. Now I'm going back to the bottom. Get the other side here. So the solder wants to go to the heat. So once I've got my side hot enough to get the solder to flow. I want to put enough on there, push it in there so that it flows all the way around the piece. And again, spraying it down real light. And that's all I'm doing to tap it, just make sure it's stuck. So we have just a little block of solder there. And then on the bottom, again, we just have a full circle around it. That's what we're looking for. We've got really good contacts. All of this 
fire scale. It's not really a scale, it's more of the flux. Um, that all comes off in the tumbler. So, and then rinse and repeat. So I bring it down, raise that up. And and I just always eyeball these, just making sure it's straight. I wonder if it would be possible to go upsize what you're working on to make an old fashioned candle holder. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, you can use uh, the big serving spoons and uh, uh, what did I use before? That's too much. Um, you can use the serving spoons not the giant ones. I mean, you could. Um, I've seen some of them where they took a fork time and put it and put it into a, straight up and down in the bowl and soldered it in place so it the candle would stick into it on the inside of the bowl and then the handle had bigger ends. Um, this would make a pretty one. So you'd bend it like a bracelet. All right. Um, let's see what I can do right now. That works there. Let's see. So you're not heating things up before you add solder. So I'm heating the the point where the solder is. So. just this point right here where they touch. I'm not heating the whole thing up like uh, soldering silver. This is uh, rosin core solder, so it has a flux built in. I'm So I'm just heating right here where both metals are hot enough to attach to the uh, each piece, the spoon and the knife. And then the bottom is the same thing, except you do have to heat up almost the whole bowl before you can get it. But I focus right on those two points. That's uh, that's what I'm I'm going for. I don't want to melt off all the silver plate. Um,
testing, testing. Okay, hopefully that fixed it. Let's see if it's still coming up. Okay, can you hear me now? Um, I should have it fixed. I think whenever I pulled it just a little bit, it kind of... Okay, good. Um, let's see. Okay, I was going to make candle holder. This can be pretty. So, old-fashioned candle holder. This part needs to come up and go around. So we want to keep the pattern. So we're going to curl this around. Bring that up. So, let me switch cameras here. That's the phone. <laughs> Try and get that to focus for you. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go with our bracelet block. So this is my old one. This is the new one. It's got magnets in it. Is that going to fit in there? Yeah, that'll work there. So, yeah, let's go ahead and just flatten this real quick. I'm just flattening the handle. All right, so we're gonna flip this over. Okay. So I'm gonna get it just to the other side. Make sure it's straight. Better nice and slow. So we're here. Let's see if we can bring this up the other way. I'm gonna go to a smaller pin. And I'm just going in the middle and just want to raise this up a little bit it's not going to let me okay so i'm just going to bend this up and let's get 
try and get it 45. So this will actually hold like a tea light candle. It's it's big enough. Um, let's see. Hmm. So it needs to be able to stand up on its own. But I don't know if it's going to because we have so much weight back here. I don't really want to go over and putting a flat spot is it in it isn't going to change that. So it'd have to be the candle size to hold it. Or I wonder if I can take right here and bend that down if it would hold kind of like a uh, a jewelry holder. Uh, I really like being able to carry it like that though. Let's see. If I do that, can I bring it back to this point? Let's straighten this out and go for that. I'm just going to try and see if I can get that to bend just a little bit because it should be able to sit by its sit on its own. Keep this straight. Okay, so now we'll take and we'll flatten this guy out. It's not going to let me. Four legs made out of knife handles. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, so I'm just trying to bend this back straighter. So. Now I'm going to go in the middle here. So this is my shape right now. I don't want that shape. I'm going to go right in the middle here. Can you guys see that? Be a nice smooth curve. That's what I wanted. So it sits on its own right now. I'll flatten that out. I can show some of the flower. Hmm. I don't like that bend. <laughs> Am I going to chase it too far? Let's try this. I just want to see if I can get that bend softer. So 
not helping me a whole lot. Okay, you found a sweet spot for sits well. Yeah. So right now I'm trying to get that hard bend out of there. I can probably do that with the mallet. Okay, where's my mouth? We just want little movements here. So I'm going right on that spot that I bent, that I've been trying to get out. I'm almost there. Little tiny movements. So I'm getting that kink out of there. So I think I've just about got it. That piece. Actually, about pretty close. I don't want to tap too hard on my blocks. There we go. So now it's nice. Now let's shape it again. Okay, now we have our... It's really round now. Now I'm going to open it up. Kind of work it a little bit. So you can definitely hold that. I think I want to curl that under a little bit more. And looking at it straight. right there. Go just a touch more. There we go. So everything's straight. And I think it looks straight here on a flat surface. I'm going to just touch more. There we go. Now we're nice and flat. Sorry, I forgot to keep reading. Mallet against a roller. Yeah, I got it figured out. So nice and round. Now let's go ahead and solder in a fork time. Switch cameras here. Oh, got to reload that one.
There we go. Um, let's see if that fixes it. Okay, so let's see if it keeps running here. All right, we're that's the camera I want to use. Um, so as we're getting this, I'm going to take and grab a fork tine, not from that one. Let's see. There we go. Okay. Let's see if it's working. Let's reload that. Uh, microphone should have sound now. We're here. Okay. I lost my camera again. Okay. That shouldn't have. Okay. Why is it this? Way? Okay. So I'm going to this camera for now. Okay, so I'm just going to eyeball the center here. Looks like the middle. I feel safe with that. So can I go over? No, the center. Okay. Okay. 
I guess it's going to start snowing soon. All right, let's get started with this. So I'm just going to make a small uh, scratch, basically. on my screen okay so I'm going to use my nail dremel when I was doing my wife's nails I was doing gel nails every two weeks for her um, I got one of these don't do this I got one of these and it ended up being my go-to for jewelry when I started making a silverware. I love that. We got so that Saturday night. We had snow yesterday. Not a whole lot. Um, let's see. There we go. That messed everything up. Um, all right, it shows still have people. Let's try this again. Um, I'm going to use this bristle disc. Get that camera. Testing, testing. How's that for sound? Should be on. Let's see. Okay, let's see. How is that for sound? Let's get rid of that one. Come to that one. And live stream just dropped. Okay, what's going on here? Uh, 
Uh, YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. I should have enough going for it. Can you guys hear me again? Yes, yeah, sound. I think your Wi-Fi might be not be up to much. Uh, you're back. Okay, good. Um, I think I have everything worked out. Let's hope that stays that way. Um, okay. Let me just get through this. Okay, good. I didn't want to go farther without you guys because that's kind of the point of this. <laughs> Focus. Okay. I don't think so. It doesn't look like it's snowing enough for that. And I have my booster right beside me here. Let's get rid of that one. Go to this one. Okay. And we're back. And my camera froze. Alright, we're going back to this one. This is what we're going to use. So, I do like the idea of drilling a hole better. Because I don't have to worry about it just breaking mm -hmm. off. So if I can just drill a hole, I can put the fork tine up through it. And then we can solder it in place. And then smooth down the bottom. I think that is going to be a lot better as far as um, making it bulletproof, as bulletproof as we can get it. Okay, so I'm going to put on the glasses and just kind of try and buff out this bowl a little bit so it's nice and pretty. <laughs> So next, let's get our fork tine. These are all going to be rings. I don't have that zoomed in, do I? So this is my rings. After you finish this live stream, power off your router and then back on. It may help. Thank you. I'll try that. Okay. Um, I don't see any forks that I want. Actually, this middle one. These will work. So I'm just going to snip one of these. Fork tines up, actually. Yeah. I'll use these in different projects. Sorry, get up here where you guys can see me. Go slow down as I can get. Scoops back in the rings. 
This is the guy I want. Get these guys where they go. All right, so that's our, this is going to be our candle in. I'm going to take and sharpen it up on the saw. Let's see if this guy here wants to work. Nope. <laughs> uh, this thing is so weird. Uh, okay, so I'm going to sharpen this up. real quick on this my little sander here unfortunately this camera isn't made for this okay Oh, I'm going to sand the bottom also. So I sanded down the sides a little bit too, so it's all even, and we're there too. So next, I need to find a drill bit that is big enough for this. I'm going to put you guys down for a second. about my video it's kind of a bummer so I'm gonna match my drill my drill bit to the hole it's gonna be this guy come on The other day when we brought in all the silverware from the house, some friends of mine were going through and organizing it all by pattern for me. So I still have boxes and boxes and boxes of silverware everywhere. So I can't quite get into all these little spots. Um, just this. Here. Right. And we're going for this guy. Center marked again. Pretty sure it's right there. Okay, and we're going to dink the little hole into it with. Our little hole punch here. There we go. 
using beeswax to lube the drill bit. See if our fork tank goes up through it. Just barely. If I go bigger, I don't want to go bigger. All this good. Come back here to the workbench. And we're going to do the rest by hand. On zoom in. Uh, the silverware I've collected for years and years, and a lot of these were just in the house waiting for our storage to get done, or waiting for the trailer to get done, my shop. And we just brought everything in. So I have probably about 15,000 pieces of silverware that aren't cut. Oh, it's got a glare on it. Sorry. Nothing is working right today. Nope. 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 Here we go. That's pretty good. Um, hey, it's live. So here's what I have right now. We have just a little bit poking in through there. I think that's about all we really need to come up. I don't think I need to do anything else. That's enough to hold any candle you want. You go bigger than that and it's not going to... It's going to want to break the candle. So I think we're good there. So I'm going to mark this. So I've got it marked. So I'm going to cut it off just a little bit below that so I can sand it down. And we have enough to hold it in place while we solder it. And then we can grind the bottom after that over here. So here's our so there's our little piece. I'm gonna drop that right down in there. I like it. Oh, it won't stretch any further. Let me zoom you in and you'll see what I'm going to do here. Okay, so as I move this, you can see that moving there. So make this nice and straight. So we're just pulling back on it a little bit. That looks straight to me. Let's go to the torch. And I'm basically going to do the same thing I did with the bud bases. I really just need the fork tine and the spoon. The 
Use my pick to try and draw that around back. Looks like it went. Let's see. Dance in water. Nope, it didn't go around. All right, so we're going to heat it up again. And I'm trying to fill the hole. Looks like a lot of the solder went down through, which I am perfectly fine with. Sometimes I overthink things to make it a lot more simple to follow. I try. Okay, so let's look and see. There's light coming through. There's no light coming through. Let's see if it's really stuck on there. Nope, not really stuck in there. So let's pop this out. <laughs> That's funny. There we go. So I was trying to get it out and then it locked up. I want to make sure my bowl's clean. Sorry. So I'm going to put this in the water. And we're going to try this again. But this time I'm going to use flux. I want this all nice and clean. Glasses. Let me get this area cleaned up again. Try and get this old solder kind of just 
ground out a little bit, blend it in. Thing on the back side. And we don't want to forget about the middle. It's almost time for a new hand piece. Let's see what will fit in there. I think I will. So, we'll get some flux on here. Even though this already has flux in it, I'm going to use some to just make sure that we got a little extra in there. So, this flux is called Ruby Fluid. Let's get this thing. Oh, we need to clean this too. For that, I'm going to use my 80 grit. And be wary how hard you push because this thing will get hot. Oh, that's what I didn't do. I didn't sharpen it up first. So I'm just going to use my little drum sander here. And I'm going to hold it just at an angle. Try and use the on the front foot and angle on it. Again, watch how hard you're pushing. This can be a lot easier to do right here than after it gets in the bowl. Almost there. <laughs> and that's why we're in apron. And once I put this in the tumbler, any little rough sharp edges on there besides the point will uh, get smoothed down. So I am going to take, this is a 400 grit wheel. I'm just going to save it a little shinier. Gonna help it stick into things also. Make it shiny. Let me turn my heater back on. <laughs> 